back to the student guitar build series that I'm doing for my students at a local college's luthier program uh, that I'm teaching. And last time we basically got the neck all the way up to this point. Fretboard was glued on, everything was flush cut, headstock, tuner holes, all put in place. So the students are working on getting up to this point too. They're lagging a little bit behind, but we're going to keep moving forward and hopefully the ones that are behind are going to catch up uh, soon by doing some open shop time. The next step, we have some choices. There's a lot of different directions that we can do. We still have to install fret markers, side dot markers. We have to radius the fretboard. We have to contour the back of the neck. Those are the next major four things that we've got to accomplish, and really they can be done in any order that you want. I'm going to show doing the fret markers first, then the side dot markers. The reason I'm doing it that way is because I want to keep this solid profile as long as I can. I've got a good stable base um, in order to do the fretboard radiusing. But while the fretboard is flat, I've got a good flat surface in order to measure the center points of the frets that are going to get markers, and so that kind of helps me out. And while it's everything still squared up, it's pretty easy to do the side dot markers too. So that's why I'm choosing this method. If, uh, if you want to do it in a different order, it's certainly up to you, uh, but this is the one I think is going to work best for our situation here with this style of neck. When we're talking about fret markers, there's a lot of different ways that we can go and a lot of choices that we can make for those markers. For instance, probably the most vintage specifically for a rosewood fretboard is going to be these guys here, your basic clay dot markers. And they're about quarter inch and I believe an eighth inch um, on the... Uh, on the side dot markers, but that's pretty standard and we could certainly do that if we choose. If you're working with maple fretboards, typically black dots are going to be what's used, uh, but there's also other options. These are tortoise uh, type dots, which are pretty cool, you know, in a maple fretboard, and you can use other things too. Some of the most common ones for the darker fretboards is things like this. This is Mother of Pearl, both gold and white. And we've also got the abalone uh, shell type of dot markers, which kind of help dress things up a little bit. And, and lastly, uh, we've got a, a technique that I've used before very successfully, and that's taking a piece of binding from the guitar, and I'm matching the fret dot markers to it by just cutting out a little quarter inch. In this case, I did six millimeter uh, dots on that so you can certainly create your own in numerous different ways. I know people that color epoxy and maybe mix that with ground up stones of some sort in order to create a fret dot marker of their own. That's a possibility. There's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Another way that I use um, pretty often in my own uh, maximum custom guitars is synthetic stones. So these are synthetic stones in multiple colors and they have a really iridescent effect to them and, and I like them a lot. There's a white kind of similar to a kind of a goldish uh, color and then a darker color that I like in maple that has blues and greens in it. And there's a lot more colors that I can have made, uh, but these are ones that, uh, that I've been using recently. For the side dot markers, you can pretty much find any material that you get for the for the main uh, fretboard marker to use as the side dots and you can get a matching. Like that was the clay one that I already showed you but here's some uh, abalone ones that are set up to be, I don't know, generally two or three millimeters, sometimes eighth of an inch you'll find them uh, somewhere between that and then here's some two millimeter ones in the synthetic stones uh, that I use with my fret dot markers. So so that, I have, so that I have side dot markers that match um, the top of the fretboard, and I, I kind of like that look. You can also get generic plastic. These happen to be two millimeters in diameter, and they're black and white. I've also got kind of a cream color and a red color, so that you can get a lot of plastic. These are by far the cheapest and the easiest to work with. 
So we've got two matching necks now um, that I was actually making in unison as we were videoing this process. So we've got two that are identical pretty much in every respect. Uh, flat saw and maple, rosewood fretboards, same shape, uh, same features, same slotted truss rods on both of them. So these guys are identical. One of the things you'll find is if you're going ahead and making one neck, it's not that much harder to make a second or third neck at that same time, get a little bit of production going while you have machines and jigs set up for doing a specific function. We're gonna come in real close now and give you a close up of how we do this. This is one of the least complicated methods of marking where your, where your fretboard markers are gonna go. The biggest issue that I find that people have is they put them in the wrong place. Okay, so, so I'm gonna mark it while I still have my sense about me and I get too far into this. Okay, third, fifth, seventh, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, 10, 11, 12, okay, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21. 21 frets. Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to find the dead center. Now you could certainly eyeball it and pick, uh, I pick right there as the dead center. And you may be right and you may not be right. So a way to ensure that you're right is to take a straight edge and measure from one corner of the fret uh, slot to the other corner of the fret slot and just make a mark across there. You sort of have to account for the width of the pencil. I'll give you a little bit of leeway for the thickness of the lead in the pencil. Because I'm using a darker wood, I've, I've opted to use what's called a welder's pencil and it just gives a nice silver look to it and I'll mark that. Now another thing that you can't see at this point in time is that I'm wearing the sexy magnif magnification lenses um, in order to make sure that I see exactly what I want to see. And I can draw all the way from corner to corner if I'm concerned at all that I'm hitting the corner correctly. So let's do it on this one. Corner to corner. Okay, right there, and X marks the spot. And we'll just keep going down the fretboard until we've got all of our X's in place. Now if you focus on the 12th fret, traditionally you'll have two round dot markers, quarter inch dot markers on either side. The thickness of the fretboard at this point is approximately two inches, maybe two and a sixteenth, uh, somewhere in the, around that range. So you can, you can draw your center line and then divide that into two sections and then measure off the center line each way and square that up. And Typically about a half inch to nine sixteenths off the center line is where that dot is going to be on either side. And you can do it in order to make it look right, uh, but that's where you're going to place it. Now, I haven't used two round dots in a while on my necks. Um, I typically have a, di a different feature that I, that I use there. So I'm just going to only need one. So after we get our marks made where it's going to be, we're going to take a punch, a nail, or something like that, and we're going to mark the dead center. So I'm going to line that up, go straight down. Let's get another little shot there on that one. Now those little tiny punched holes are for our brad point drill bit that we're going to use to drill out these holes. So now that we have all of our X's made and our little O's, we've got X's and O's. 
All right, well, they're not really O's yet. They're just little dimples from, uh, from the punch, the center punch. But we are going to drill these out. Now, here's the critical thing. In doing it in this step before we radius, we only have one major concern, and that is if you're doing at the 12th fret two dots on either side, how deep can those dots go so that they're not taken out during the radiusing process. So for that you have to determine how thick are your dots and what type of radius are you using and just making sure you're going a deep enough where the dots aren't going to totally disappear but not so deep that they're going to be recessed. So you kind of have to figure that out. Uh, maybe go the same depth as these and if you need to go a little deeper after your radius then uh, wait and install those dots uh, at that point in time. That's, uh, that's up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and do all mine except for the 12th uh, because I have something different planned for that. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and knock out the other ones. Again, your eyeball is going to really tell you if it looks right. And to me, to my eyeball, that looks pretty good. Now, I am using a six millimeter as opposed to a quarter inch, so it's slightly undersized of what uh, you would normally see, but that's, that's what I'd like on my guitars. So I'm just going to keep going and uh, knock out the rest of them real quick. The depth looks good, and we are going to insert those dots with a little bit of epoxy, and it'll be great. All right, all the dots that we want to do is uh, all done right now. Once you get to the bigger blocks, it's a little bit easier because if there's a little tiny error left and right, you're not going to be able to tell. We're back on the skinnier frets. Uh, they're they're going to show if you're not right on the money. So definitely take your time, measure twice, drill once. I think that's the saying or a variation thereof. Now, if you want to get really creative with mass producing your fret dots and you're doing them all by hand, uh, you can create a jig like this. Uh, this is a tapered jig where the neck kind of slides into it and then the top acrylic piece has got all of the 25.5 scale fret lines scribed in it and all the holes in corresponding places uh, placed in it. So all I have to do is slide that neck Till it's tight if it's a 25.5 inch scale and then I can slide my template left and right until the fret lines, scribe lines, fall right on top of my actual fret lines and I can just go ahead and drill all these holes and that'll make it a whole lot faster. Okay we're going to go ahead and install the dot markers. I could have drilled out the side dot holes and done it all at once but I'm just going to do one step at a time. So I've drilled the holes, now I'm going to insert the markers and uh, then I'll sand that flush and go ahead and do the side dot markers. How you install the markers depends on really what type of markers you're using. If I was using the clay markers that came with it, I'd probably use a two-part epoxy and I would put a little dab of that in the, in the bottom pockets and then insert the clay. Hopefully that epoxy kind of squeezes out a little bit and fills in the gaps and that'd be good. Uh, if you're using like a plastic or even, uh, or even like a shell type of material. Um, I find just CA glue works pretty good on that. What I'm using though is this uh, synthetic stone and it's actually translucent. If you hold these little guys 
up to the light, you can see through it. So therefore, what I'm going to use is a UV curing resin uh, to secure them into place. And I've got uh, a UV light handy that will allow me to do that. The benefit is it's, it's dry almost instantaneously, totally cured in maybe 20 seconds tops. Uh, so it's really, really fast and I can get right into the next step then. So I've got a little bit of uh, rosewood powder set aside and that powder will be used to fill in any cracks or gaps that I have before I harden the resin. And uh, so uh, I've got that ready just in case. These guys are tiny and they're pretty sneaky sometimes. So a little tweezer type principle to insert them uh, helps me out. All right, let's take a look at this here. I've got my resin. I'm going to put a drop inside of each hole, really. And we'll go ahead and put one of those in each side. So there's two things I don't want to happen. I don't want that going below the surface and I don't want to smash it. So I will take another piece of rosewood And I will tap it down fairly gently. And I don't mind if it's a little bit proud at this point. And a little bit of that resin will squeeze out and all of that is okay with me. All right, now we're going to use our special 12th fret marker, this ring. I'm going to take that resin and I'm going to squeeze that around. This one, I'm afraid it's going to be more fragile and it's a really tight fit. So I'm going to use a block to try to distribute that pressure and I'm going to try to press it down slowly rather than hammering it down. And hopefully it doesn't crack. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I got a lot of squeeze out there, which is fine. Now, I'm not sure if there's any gaps. I don't want there to be any gaps around there. So this is where I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, rosewood dust, and I'm just going to spread that and work it in from all angles hoping that fills in any cracks that I might have there whatsoever. All right, now that we've got them all pressed in, all the round ones were actually a very good fit. I, ha I had to kind of tap them very lightly to get them to seat, so I'm not worried about any gaps there. Um, and they're well deep enough that uh, won't be an issue uh, sanding this flat. And when I radius it, I won't be taking a whole lot off the center, so I'm not worried about that either with this design. Let's go ahead and cure them.
All right, just a few minutes, it's dry, fully cured. And now I'm gonna start flattening out all those stones. Okay, they're not polished up yet, but they are flat. And we are gonna take that down after we radius it and uh, polish them up with, you know, go all the way up to about 800 grit. And they will look amazing if they don't already to you. All right, for the side dots, we're gonna use two millimeter matching dots to the uh, synthetic stone that we have on the top. Uh, what I do want them to be, though, is perfectly in a straight edge along the seam between the fretboard and the neck blank. So I'm just going to go a little bit, maybe a half a millimeter or a millimeter above uh, where the neck and the fretboard come together, and that will keep consistency all the way down, and that's what I'm looking for. So there's two ways we can do this. We can certainly measure. It's not that difficult. Uh, measure the space between the two frets. In this case, it's approximately 31 millimeters. And I can say, okay, I want 15 millimeters and then another half. So it's going to be right about there. And that will be close enough to really get it where I need to be. Down at the lower end, it's about 10 millimeters. So we want our line to be in the five millimeter. And to my naked eye, those look pretty good. So I can take this to the drill press, use the straight edge, um, the fence basically that I have on my uh, drill press and go ahead and drill my holes. And that's pretty simple. But again, if you want to, you can build yourself a little jig. This is a tapered uh, side here that allows the neck itself to sit perfectly vertical, perfectly parallel to the drill press. So I know that I'm going in straight, all right, to the, uh, to the edge of the fretboard. I also have uh, brass grommets in here that represent a 25.5 inch scale with a double at the 12th fret. And I can move this half inch guide fore and aft in order to get that perfect alignment. And once I get that fore and aft alignment, I'd lock those into place. And then I can just move my right and left alignment to be perfectly centered. And then a simple, simple little clamp will hold that all into place. I'll go ahead and put one on, on each side and that will keep it nice and tight and it'll keep the line that I want. Now I can go up to the drill press and I can just use the two millimeter or the three millimeter holes if I'd rather have three millimeter and I can drill all those holes that happen to be perfectly spaced in between each of those frets that get side dots. So this is another little jig you can build to help you if you're doing more than one. All right, there's our two millimeter holes. Perfectly in a straight line. Now what we did for the fretboard markers, we're gonna do for the side markers. Just a little drop. Hardest part here is gonna be getting them to seat inside. go. Slightly proud, but we will sand that flush.
All right, I'll do my UV light. This is a pretty quick episode, but the fret markers and the side dot markers are a very important part of an electric guitar. And when we're doing the Fender style, the dots are the most traditional. Now I used kind of a non-traditional material and a synthetic stone, and I've got a kind of a unique 12th fret marker going on, but that's just my personal customization. So I want to close this episode, and next episode we're going to go ahead and radius the fretboards, uh, and then the next episode after that we're going to contour the back of the necks, and once all the students get up to that part, we're going to start working on the bodies, because uh, that's where we need to be. So as we leave, let me give you a little close-up of the uh, two fretboards. I wiped a little naphtha on there in order to kind of let you see what it's going to look like once it's kind of oiled in the end and it's looking good. The second one I did has got a bluish tint to it. The first one is more of a greenish tint, both very iridescent in the way they look, which is really sharp, and these are just tight, tight perfectly located. And might as well, while I'm at it, give you a look at the side dot markers. There's the bluish one, 12th fret, and the greenish. Amazing how iridescent that is. All right, so there we have it. We've got the next, the marker's all done, and be looking for the next episode where we are going to radius the fretboard. I'm probably going to stick to a standard radius, maybe 9.5 or maybe 12. I'm not sure which at this point in time. Maybe I'll do one of each. Uh, but until then, remember, no matter what you do, start with excellence. Yeah.